All right, y'all, we're gonna go <clears throat> blog mode today uh, using my GoPro. Figured it's very easy to carry around my house and whatnot, so why not make some more content for y'all uh, in the midst of me cleaning up our house and whatnot uh, and share some biblical context and concepts with you. So topic for today is uh, TikTok and why you need to go. So uh, TikTok, first off, I wanna clarify, I'm not making an emphatic statement that TikTok is a sin and that if you have it, you're going to hell or something like that. I don't believe that for a second. But with that being said, I wanna talk about the dangers of TikTok and how it hurts. Whether you're watching inappropriate content on there or appropriate content on there, it doesn't change my answer. Um, so first off, a little background. I got my start in my Christian ministry um, following, not my Christian ministry, but my following in Christian ministry on TikTok. Also wanna make a side note, I'm not wearing some weird samurai outfit. This is my uh, little, it's called a Moby wrap that I wear for my little daughter who was just born five days ago. Super exciting. Um, but anyways, I just don't want you to be distracted with what I'm wearing for the rest of the video because you're like, dude, what is that? And he has his hair in like a little like samurai bun, I guess. Um, but anyways, got my start in Christian ministry um, online on TikTok, created an account a few days later, got uh, around a million views um, in about two, three weeks not trying to flex numbers, I'm just saying that's how I got my start and now we are here. Now, uh, how could I say in a hypocritical way to, for you to get off TikTok when I just told you that I'm using it and use it myself to gain influence? Well, what I do is I shoot these videos. I don't scroll on TikTok. I don't watch videos at all on TikTok. And um, whenever I get somebody who sees one of my videos, I try to get them over to my Instagram because I have a bunch of free uh, content for them there. And this stuff helps show them how to uh, look more like Jesus in their everyday walk with Christ, as well as get them off of social media as much as possible. Now, I'm not anti-social media. Again, you're watching this on a social media platform by definition, but I am against people spending so much time on these platforms, but I am specifically extremely anti TikTok. TikTok is an issue for a few reasons. First off, um, the inappropriate, this is, a, this is the obvious one, right? This is the elephant in the room, is this platform has a lot of inappropriate stuff on it with people who are not dressed as they should be dressed, um, and people are using it and hearing Jesus stuff and using that justification because of the benefit from that Jesus stuff to tell them and to explain or justify why they are and should be getting on it, uh, the platform. Yet, yeah, you really know deep down that you actually are seeing some stuff that's really not appropriate and that you really shouldn't be looking at. So that's the first reason. Second reason is short form content in general. Um, I'm not a big fan of short form content. Um, again, it, it's one of those things that for a very, very small select group of people, a very short, small percentage of people, it's actually really beneficial because they can acquire information and actually apply that information very consistently and very regularly. But for the majority of people, they're unable to do this. Most people do not know how to be able to uh, hear short form content and apply it. Um, this is whether you're watching videos on real estate wholesaling or whether you're watching videos on how to do makeup tutorials better if you're a girl or whether this is you as a Christian learning about biblical content. Um, the issue is you are, let's say again, you're one of the very rare people who only are listening and watching appropriate videos on TikTok with no girls inappropriately dressed, no dudes that are shirtless all the time, etc. Assuming that you're in that category of people, again, that's super cool, but the issue is, is you're learning and listening to scripture every single day on all of these things. First issue that I have in this uh, kind of part A of this is that you are hoping that these people are saying biblical things. Um, now, again, unless you're somebody who's reading scripture daily, really studying the word for yourself, you aren't going to know the answer to that uh, unless you do know the word. So it's not a replacement, it is a supplement, not a substitute for reading scripture. Um, so first off, you don't even know if this stuff is, is actually accurate. Second issue I have is scripture tells us that by the measure of knowledge that we have, by that we're judged. Meaning that the more that you know about God, the more that you're going to be held accountable for. So if you don't know anything about scripture, then God's not going to be holding you to the same standard as somebody who knows the truth and intentionally chooses not to live in it. Um, so it's really important that us as Christians are acquiring knowledge and then doing nothing with it. Scripture says in, in James 1, that it's not hearers of the word who are justified, but doers of the word are those who are justified. So we need to make sure that we're living out what God's called us to, not um, simply just listening to great content. Because again, let's assume that you're listening to all of the correct doctrinal teachers who preach the real true biblical gospel and whatnot, and you're still not doing anything with it. Well, that actually makes you worse than before you ever heard it, because now you have a new standard that you can be judged by that you're still not living up to or even close to. 
So it's important that when we listen to these things, that we actually do something. We're effectual doers of the word with the things that we learned. So when you hear something about your pornography addiction and then you choose to not do anything about it in your life, um, but now you know and are equipped with how to get free from it, you're worse off now because you had the knowledge that you otherwise didn't have, right? Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. You have the knowledge now and you're still not living in it. That's a really not cool place to be. So that's the second reason that I don't like second or short form content. Uh, well, TikTok specifically, but short form content. Final reason that I don't like short form content is generally when somebody is a fan of short form content, they are not getting deep down into any spiritual topics, right? Uh, again, I don't care how deeply you know real estate, real, real estate wholesaling. It's irrelevant to me because I don't care about, you know, money is irrelevant. But what really does matter is your understanding of the gospel, your understanding of evangelism, your understanding of what discipleship looks like, what fellowship looks like, your understanding of what righteousness really means and holiness and purity, and your understanding in what uh, being radical is and being unashamed is. And if you're not seeing, unashamed isn't a word in scripture, but if you're not seeing all those other words that are in scripture and actually studying those things, scripture tells us that we are supposed to study to show ourselves approved. Also says that we're supposed to rightly divide the word of God. You are not rightly dividing the word of God if you're listening to a 30 second video on TikTok. Again, I'm not saying that you can't listen to those videos or that those videos are negatively affecting or impacting you. I'm not saying that at all. But if that's the extent of everything, it definitely is. Now, if one of those things provoke you into looking deeply into fasting because you want to know everything about fasting, cool, that's awesome. But for 99% of the people watching, if you're being super honest with yourself and humble, you would agree with me that your, um, your listening to and watching of TikToks, although maybe even 80% of it is good, the 20% that is not is worth you getting rid of the platform entirely. Now, again, what I did not just say is that you haven't gotten more good than bad off of it. We're not doing a scale here. Sin is the standard. Or I rather, I should say, righteousness is the standard. And if you're missing that mark because of the 20%, then 100% of TikTok should be removed. Um, again, if you have a way of finding blockers, ways to make sure that everything that you ever see is only Christian stuff, etc., cool. That, that's awesome if you know a way of doing that. I personally don't. I know of a few strategies that could maybe lead you to potentially getting there. Most people would not use them anyways. Like you could use like only hashtag Christian, Jesus is King, Christianity, things like that. Um, but I challenge you, first off, go to YouTube. Uh, well, first off, spend your time with Jesus yourself. Second off, go to YouTube and look up great in-depth studies of these topics. Um, and if you're doing that, you're gonna be getting way more out of your reading and you're gonna be able to grow into righteousness and truth in these areas versus you just going and finding a short form piece of content and then running with it. These, um, these, these programs, these, um, these, these platforms, social media platforms are made to suck you in and keep you in and keep you addicted. And uh, again, 99% of the time, that's a bad thing. This is why I create content on these platforms, but I do not actually uh, consume any content on these platforms with the exception of YouTube. I spend a lot of time on YouTube watching sermons. Um, so yeah, I definitely do that. But um, outside of that, no, I'm not spending time on TikTok, not for a second watching videos. I'm not spending time on Twitter and Facebook scrolling because there's no use in it and it's a waste of time to argue with people on those platforms. So I'm not making a legalistic statement saying if you have TikTok, you're sinning, but I wanna say that you as a Christian need to make sure that if you are using it, that you're extremely cautious with what you're doing and really intentional about all those points that I just brought up. But I would argue for the vast majority of you watching this video, getting off of it entirely would be more beneficial than you having it at all. Appreciate you all if I've earned your 